One, two, three, go. Hello. Now it's time for an all lens. Mm, I've got my, I think I would like to sh just show how it looks inside the uh, Focus Helicos and this old Nikko P Auto uh, 2.8 105mm non AI. Um, this is not about uh, how to clean and re loop the, uh, the Focus Helicos. Um, it's only I only show how it uh, actually is disassembled and or do all the marks uh, and then assemble it, the lens again. So let's go ahead. <clears throat> nice old lens. Hmm. You see the focus actually works really good nice and yeah not too stiff and not too soft the aperture well this works very fine I mean and the glasses actually looks okay <clears throat> but um, let's have a look inside and see how we actually get into the um, the focus system in this <clears throat> first um, we need to put the lens on the focus ring on uh, infinity and then take out the three screws one here there and there out and it's all happened with the whole lens will be disassembled with three types of um, flathead screwdrivers the the one we have here is a um, something like this Vera <coughs> it's um, 0.2 is the, the tip is 0.2 in the width and um, it's actually a 1.5 millimeter thick in diameter so um, I need that for take out some of the screws gently unscrew them They're not that tiny, but take care of them. So the lens has to stay on infinity. So here are three screws are okay. And then it cannot just be taken off like that. I mean, it has to be kind of, and then it come off. So um, this is how it actually looks. The point where the um, <clears throat> near end is um, coming to is that see put it on again and just set the lens to in near end then take it off the focus ring and see where the end of the the I mean the near end this piece of metal I don't know what it calls a stop uh, of the focus ring 
but um, it will go against here. And in the other end, this little pin will um, will stop the lens from going any. Uh, I mean, stop the focus system from going any longer. Just just put it back, and then see. There the pins stop the focus. <clears throat> now, let's continue. In this lens, uh, somebody has, I mean, I think it's on the factory. They put on some marks, especially here, and there, and there. It's not me, but just for be sure that it is correct. Um, I set the infinity mark here and I also set it here so I know where infinity actually is. When those three are, I mean, at the same line. <clears throat> um, next, we have to take off the, the front yeah, not the ring, but I mean, before we do so, we take off the bayonet. Yeah, as I remember, I've just been into this lens and lens and just uh, make it ready to go into. Well, all the five screws on the bayonet mount has to be taken out. Sometimes they can sit really tight. It's not the, the case in this lens. So uh, it's quite easy to unscrew them. A good quality flathead screwdriver is very important to not damage the screws and uh, it will be safer to work with. Now keeping the hand uh, tight here because uh, we need to have a good contact here. Well, when lifting off the uh, the mount, bayonet, there's a spring inside here, which have um, <clears throat> something to do with the aperture when it springs back. I made myself a um, out of a dentist tool, um, which I filed and grind this uh, dentist tool. So it's easy to take out the little spring here. And uh, it will make it a lot easier. So, now that was that. Now we come to the, uh, and take care of one thing. The back lens group is completely flat, so when taking off the mount, take care of the lens. Good. Now, then we take off the little set screw on the side of the uh, front, what do you say, the silver part of the front lens. Not the yeah, it's it's a front ring, yeah. And I to that I need a small 1.2 millimeter flathead screwdriver. In this case, I use a Vera. The number on. 
it should be quite easy and the quality is good so just take it out because uh, it's tiny I mean really tiny one could just actually just let it set on the on the screw driver so you know where it is then I have set a little mark here so I know where the the screw has to go in and then I count five and a three quarter uh, counterclockwise and uh, somewhere here I actually put a mark on so I know where it comes off actually here close to the uh, stop so I count it can't sit tight yeah here we go and um, then one two three four and five and then it has to come up here and the quarter Boop. then it's off good now before taking out the the lens block which is a held in place with a, a screw here so it will not turn around the um, the back of the lens we have the aperture control pin from the which uh, draw the the aperture blades to yeah see 22 and um, but it has to stay there therefore I set a mark close to the screw here this screw um, so when I take it out uh, it has to stay on full open and I will tell you why because this ring which is uh, the 25 2.5 <laughs> aperture and the, it has to stay there I set a mark here and I set a mark yeah set a mark here and a mark here so those two marks has to to set close to each other and the other here has to stay there because it can go all the way round and it will just so you know where things has to stay when you put back in the lens actually here and just straight over it has to stay like this and on the lens I mean the lens assembly this um, this one has to stay here as full open and this one has to stay there because then when uh, assembled the lens I just uh, put it on I mean put it in and I will know where things has to stay um, because I also set a mark on the back of the lens here so I know where this this pin goes and the other here 
the same. Okay. Now I just take apart the uh, focus system, the helicoids and the aperture ring. Just take it out. <clears throat> to take out the uh, aperture ring is quite easy. Set it to 2.5 and then unscrew the, um, the long screw that goes into here. So this screw goes through the whole system. Just unscrew it fully. There's a long one. So now we can take off the uh, aperture ring. And this one has to stay there. So I can just move it here. On the other hand, now I can go round and round and round and round. Oh, where does things have to stay? Oh, yeah, it's there for. It's so important to set a mark here. Push this up here and this has to stay over here, of course. If you know how and look carefully, this has it can only stay here, so they cannot have the opposite, um, like so. It simply doesn't work, so it has to. to um, be like that. Okay. Now I take off the um, the silver ring here, where the distance and um, infrared marks are. And there's also three uh, three small screws. Bit tiny. And the last one. And it takes off like this. So it is. Now, here we are into the more delicate stuff because uh, this is actually how it works. The stop is here at my um, small marks, which is um, it's actually the same line here almost. And um, here, this small piece of metal is actually control the inner helicoid, so it will not move when I move the focus ring. So, um, and therefore, I need to measure. I mean, just to tell people how it actually is. So when the focus system is at near, I mean, on infinity, it should be something like, yeah, 48.06 millimeter. And when I go to infinity, It's around there. This 
hole. Uh, here is the same as near end. It will be something like like uh, sixty point uh, thirty or so. And therefore I also put a mark on here just to be sure where the um, where the near end is. But also when I put the helicoids back in. So I go down here because there are two holes here with two small screws that uh, hold this in place. So before taking it out from underneath in here, I need to unscrew them. It's very practical with the magnetic screwdriver. Now, take care of when um, moving the parts here, not just move it around. But you need to hold here and at the same time move the focus ring because then you can access this from underneath here. So Here we are. And then one can take it out. And another thing I mention, have to mention, I put on some marks here because this tiny little piece of metal has to sit correct. Not like this, but so. So therefore I put the, the mark on, but um, now we just go ahead and uh, continue with holding here the inner helicoid and just, well I could do it the opposite, put it back into um, to stop here the the infinity and then hold here and then unscrew the um, the inner helicoid and I make a mark here where it goes off so I just turn it And when it comes off, we have almost got a more than a full revolution. When it comes off here, I know exactly where it should sit before because I put the uh, mark here that is uh, in line with the uh, the distance mark um, so I know for sure how this goes in so you can just put it aside now the other have to go the other direction counter I mean depending on how he looks <laughs> but um, yeah and this it will go um, clockwise I also have my mark here and um, I will just turn it not a full revolution but almost when it comes off like here 
I set a mark here. So uh, it's important. It's it's not that far from the um, from the distance mark. And then I just take it apart. Yeah. Well, the focus and the grease is okay for now. Um, so I just put it back in again. Just put it aside and oh. Yeah, we have to put it back in. So, uh, yeah, let's do that. This has to say click, kind of. And then it goes there, back to the place where it was. And the front ring, oh, I have my mark here. can be difficult to see. That's my uh, off mark when it comes off. So I will put it on here um, because I know it has to sit there. Not anywhere, anywhere else. And when, when it comes in, you know it goes to the stop with the pin. And um, I know it sits correct because I can see the hole down here with the small screws where they sit, both of them. So I know they are correct. Um, and then I'll do the exact same like I begin. Turn the... Um, the uh, focus ring and the inner helicoid and put this back in again. It cannot sit that way so it has to sit like this and put it in. There. Just let it stay there. It will come on itself and then turn the holding here and turn the uh, focus ring. Until it will um, come into place, it should be there, and this one has to stay there. So it's, I mean, in line. Now it's time to put back in the screws. And uh, I have my holes here, just to catch the screws in. Not uh, too tight at first, but then you have to <coughs> to tighten the screw. So that was it. <coughs> now we just put things back in. Take this uh, silver ring. <coughs> Has to sit there with the small screws here.
<clears throat> Sometimes you need to um, put one screw in a, into another hole because it's it's old screws. So I just take another one and um, try if it's better. That screw hole. Not easy. <laughs> Here we go. So, <clears throat> and then the uh, the uh, yeah aperture ring, and uh, we need to uh, put this in place. Um, something around there to oh, have this little notch. where the focus ring and the long screw has to go into. So I just put this on and uh, I have the hole there. There's only one. And move it a little. So um, <clears throat> put a little <clears throat> Then the small screw, a little bigger screwdriver, and it should catch the thread. And then we uh, maybe need to move the the aperture in a little or oh. click and then continue screwing. So works fine. Now <clears throat> then uh, I need to put things back in. This has to be on two point five. And the um, the other part of the aperture from the mount has to stay just across like this. Yeah. And then on the lens assembly, this pin has to go as close as possible this way. The other one has to go the, the like this, close to here. And then it should be possible to just put it in. Sometimes it, it can be a little tricky. But um, Seems to be okay. And then the pin here has to go in here. Click. Put a finger on. 
Uh, and then I can just push on here and move my aperture ring. When I do not push there, it is because the spring will do that. It will just do so. So, and uh, we need to put on the front ring. And as I mentioned earlier, I set a small mark where it comes off. It was here, close to the uh, stop of the focus. So I just put it on and then find the thread. <clears throat> and then the mark, which I do not set, uh, it has to be tightened on there. So, and then put back in the set screw, which is really tiny. Cast the thread. That's it. No need to overdo the Titan. Remember, the uh, the back lens group is fully exposed, so don't don't just put it on on the on the table. It's not a problem for me because I know where <laughs> how it. Is actually okay. Now we put it back in the, uh, the mount and catch the uh, the spring here. And I need to put this this little don't know what it calls one end of the where the spring has to sit. And then just use my tool. One could actually use a uh, tweezer, but this is easier for me. Sometimes it is easier. So that's it, and then put on the, the mount and have the pin going through here. It's only on. If I set it to 22, it will be more easy to. Uh, works fine. And then we just put all the screws on the holes. So, catch the thread.
and the last one. Sometimes it's not easy with flathead screwdriver, screwdrivers and old screws. Now, now we are almost there. And the lens, lens is on infinity at the moment, here. So therefore, we um, have the infinity mark here. And it has to go here. And the holes has to um, one have to be very careful with the holes because if they just sit just a little aside, it can be a little different difficult to uh, put the screws in. But let's see if we are lucky now. Nah, not quite. There. So, and this here, second one. And the last screw. Well, so this fine list <coughs> lens is uh, back in the in the work again. It's really a great lens. So that's all for now. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.